What we're going to do today, we're going to give you some time today to work on Khan Academy. We still have a lot of people that need to get uh, closer to their goals for this triad. Um, but before we do, we're going to look at three different types of problems that you'll see on Khan Academy that relate to what we've been doing in class. Uh, we have recommended those topics for you on Khan Academy, and we're just going to do one example of each type of problem just to make sure that you know how to do it and you see that it's really the same type of problem. It might just look a little bit different. All right, so the first of those is this one here. Uh, it says multiply binomials. Binomials, does anybody know what the prefix bi means? Two. Two. So binomial is what's called a polynomial um, that has two terms in it. Um, so when it says multiply binomials, we have two terms here, uh, which would be a binomial, times two terms here, which is a binomial. Uh, so what we want to do here is we want to multiply uh, this x plus 2 times x minus 3. Now, the way we've been doing it is by using an area model and saying that this x plus 2 here in the rectangle is going to be what? The height. The height. And the x minus 3 here is going to be the width. The width. So to solve a problem like this, to multiply this out, I'm going to make an area model. Now, since we're doing this in Khan Academy, we're not going to be checking your work, but on your notes here, make sure that you're writing out the work, you're putting it all in there, um, because if you look at it later and you're not really sure what you were doing in your notes, then you're going to have trouble. Um, keep in mind, we're going to write our answer right here. So I'm going to make my rectangle model underneath here. And I'm going to make a big rectangle, but then I'm going to split it up two by two since we have two terms times two terms. And the height there is x plus two. So where am I going to put that on my picture? On the side. Yeah, I'm going to put that over on the side. I'm going to say that the height of this is x. I'm going to say that the height of this is two. And then the width is x minus three, so I'm going to put that on the top. On the top. So I'm going to say that the width of this is x, and the width of this one is negative 3, since it's a minus 3. The answer to this problem now, if, if we multiply the height of the rectangle times the width of the rectangle, what do we get? Height times width is area, right? So what we want to know, this is going to be the answer to the problem, is what the area of this big rectangle is, this whole thing. So we're going to do that by finding the area of each one. Height times width is area, right? And what's the height of this rectangle? So the height is x. What's the width? Negative, three. Negative 3. So that gives us an area of? Negative 3x. Three. Three x. Okay, what's the height of this rectangle? This one right here? 2. Two. What's the width of that rectangle? x. x. What is the area then? 2x. Two. Two x. Alright, and then what's the height of this rectangle? 2. Two. What's the width? So the area is negative 6. So then the answer to our problem, again, height times width equals area, it's going to be the area of the whole thing. Now to find the area of the whole thing, what am I going to do with those four small areas? Do I multiply them all together? No. We add them all together, right? And when we add them, we can only combine them if they are like terms. Like terms. So we do have a couple of like terms there, but uh, the x squared is going to be by itself. We'll put that one first since it has the biggest power on it. Uh, then we have the negative 3x and the positive 2x will combine to give us what? Negative x. Yep, negative x or negative 1x. Uh, you could put the 1 there, but you don't need it. Uh, and then the last one? Negative 6. Negative 6. And it says to write the answer as a quadratic. Quadratic just means an expression that has a square in it. Um, so as a quadratic in standard form. Standard form means that we need to write it with the powers going from biggest to smallest. So the standard form here is biggest power, next biggest power, and then smallest power. So we've been writing these in standard form all along. We just haven't been calling it that. There's another topic on there called special products of binomials, which is the same thing except with stuff like this, um, some different types of things happen. Uh, one thing that you might see in this is a problem that instead of saying x plus 6 times x plus 6, the problem might actually be x plus 6, that's not a 6, x plus 6 squared. If you get something that looks like this, what does that square mean? 
Yeah, the square means we're multiplying x plus 6 times x plus 6, multiplying it by itself. So a lot of times what you're going to see in this topic right here is you're going to see this, x plus 6 squared, and you're going to have to know that that means the same thing as x plus 6 times x plus 6. So you need to rewrite the problem to look like this. Now that we have it like this, we have a height and a width, and we can use an area model again. So we draw our rectangular area model. We say that the height is x plus 6, and the width is x plus 6, and then we find all the areas. x times x is x squared, x times 6 is 6x, um, 6 times x is 6x, and 6 times 6 is 36. Then we just add those all together to get our area, our, area, our answer. Um, so the first term is going to be x squared. The second one is what we get when we combine the 6x and the 6x, which would be 12x. 12x. Uh, real quick, while we're doing that term, uh, what would happen if this was a positive 6x here and this was a negative 6x? You wouldn't put anything. You wouldn't put anything. You would subtract them, but they would cancel each other out. So there wouldn't even be a term with an x in it because those would cancel each other out completely. Uh, that didn't happen here, but that is something that might happen when you're doing these special products. Um, and then the last term here is going to be 36. the 36. So in both of these topics in Khan Academy, uh, it doesn't say to use an area model, but it's the type of problem that we've been using those area models for. And again, we're not going to be grading your work, so you don't have to show all of the work. What you might do in these is just put down the x squared. You see that's x, you see that's x, and put the x squared and leave off the x times x. Um, so you might do a little bit of shorthand just to go a little quicker, uh, but it's the same thing. All right, now the last one. Uh, this is a multiple choice question on Khan Academy, but I didn't put the choices up here because I want to I I do this by ourselves without seeing what the choices were. Um, and we'll still, get, um, we'll still get the same answer that they had. So it says which equation? Equation meaning that it has what in it? An equal sign. So which equation? This has an equal sign here. Has the same solutions as this. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this part right here. And we're going to factor that. In fact, that's the name of the topic is factoring quadratics. Leading coefficient equals 1. Leading coefficient is the first coefficient is 1. You guys see the 1 in front of the x squared here, the first coefficient? It's implied. Yeah, it's implied, exactly. So it's not actually there, but if there is no coefficient, we remember that it is a 1 there as the coefficient. So if we're going to factor something like this, we're going to use an area model again, but first we're going to use, anybody remember what method we're using here? MA. So we're going to say M equals the first coefficient times the third coefficient. What's the first coefficient? I just wrote it up there for you. What's the first coefficient? 1. The coefficient is just the number part. Um, then the third coefficient is negative 14. What's 1 times negative 14? Negative 14. And then a is negative 5. All right, so we're looking for two numbers that multiply to get negative 14 and add to get negative 5. Now, there's a little bit of a trick to this. If it's going to multiply to give us a negative number, then that actually means that one of the numbers has to be negative. negative. One's positive, one's negative. And if one's positive and one's negative, when we add, we're actually going to be subtracting. Since one's positive and one's negative, they're going to be canceling each other out. So you have your factor sheet that you can use. Um, just in case you don't have yours on you right now, here are the factor pairs for 14. It's a pretty short list. Um, but we're not looking for two of them that add to negative 5. We're looking for two of them that subtract to negative 5 because one's going to be positive and one's going to be negative. Which two of these subtract to give us negative 5? Two, two and 7, right? So we're going to use these two. Uh, which one of those is going to be negative, though? The 2? The, two? Seven. the 7. Which one? Seven. The 7. Why? Because it's, it's bigger and we need the answer when we subtract them to be negative. negative. So since we subtract to get a negative 5, we need the bigger number there to be negative. Now that I have this, now I'm gonna now I'm gonna make an area model. Yes, 
So my area model is going to look the same as the ones in the last two problems. Except this time, instead of knowing what the height and the width are, this time we know what the area is. So since this is the area right here, we're going to fill those in these rectangles here. The area of the first rectangle is going to be what? 1x squared. 1x squared, or just x squared. Uh, how about the second rectangle? 2x. How about the third rectangle? Negative 7x. And then the last one? Negative 14. All right, then we look at just the top row, and we're looking for the GCF of this row right here. That's going to be our height for that row. Um, anytime this is a 1x squared or 1a squared or 1 whatever squared, um, the biggest number that goes into 1 is 1. It's the only number that goes into 1. So the GCF can't be anything other than 1. Um, 1 what? 1x in this case, because they do have an x in common. So the height is 1x, put that in there, times the width, we don't know what that is yet. It'll be pretty easy to figure out, but we'll save that for a little bit later. Height of 1x there, what times the width. And then what do I multiply by 1x to get 1x squared? 1x, so that's going to be our width. It's going to be our width here, and it's also going to be our width here. What do I multiply by 1x to get 2x? 2. So it's going to be our width here and our width here. All right, so if we've done everything right up until this point, the height that we put in here should be the same as the height we put in here. Uh, so let's check them one at a time here. What do I multiply by 2 to get negative 14? Negative 7. What do I multiply by 1x to get negative 7x? Negative 7. That's kind of nice because we get the same thing then, right? And that negative 7 is going to be my height here. Now, this isn't the answer. This isn't what I'm going to pick as my answer on Khan Academy. Uh, they're not even going to have a picture that looks like this. Um, they're going to have some equations written down. And those equations are going to have this side of the equation, the left side of the equation, factored. So instead of the area here, they're going to have the height times the width. What is the height? x minus 7. They won't put the 1 in there. Um, 1 x minus 7 means the same thing, though, right? Multiply that by the width, which is x plus, two. x plus 2. And that's not quite how the answer is going to look. The question says, which equation has the same solutions as this? Well, the answer is also going to be an equation. This is an equation, and we're trying to write another equation that has the same answer as that. So this right here is the left side of the equation, which was the area, the x squared minus 5x minus 14. But the right side of the equation is going to stay the same. So the answer is actually going to look like this. It's going to be x minus 7 times x plus 2 equals 0. So the only difference between this and what we've been doing is that we're just going to rewrite our answer as an equation like the original problem was. Okay? And actually, this shows us here the first step that we're going to do to solve an equation that looks like this. You guys remember in the opener, we had an equation that had an a squared and an a in it, and we couldn't get a by itself because they weren't like terms, and we couldn't get rid of the square root or the square with the square root without putting the a in the square root. Um, this is actually how we're going to do that. There's another step to it after this, uh, but this is the first thing we have to do to solve an equation like that.